Recording in progress.
Um, so um, I think this is the last session, but it's a very highlight one. And um, um, I'm going to be using um, both languages, switch back and forth. Um, so um, this session is Digital Campaigning and Political Finance, the Thailand story. And we have um, an honor um, to have our speakers um, today with us, three people. Uh, the first one on my right, um, Mr. Uh, Warwood Bunmad. Uh, he's currently the Deputy Election Manager, Move Forward Party. And um, the beautiful lady on my right, um, she's uh, uh, Assistant Professor um, Surachini CEI. Um, she's currently um, the lecturer at the um, Chiang Mai University, and um, she uh, works on the digital governance track, right? Yeah. And the last one, um, very interesting. We have a, a very uh, mixed, a diverse group. Uh, we have the civil society uh, from WeWatch, um, Mr. Wasin Pongkao. He's uh, currently the manager of social media monitoring project, we watch. And I myself, uh, the Peace Away Tun Care from Narison University, uh, Faculty of Social Sciences. I think that now the language is more Thai, right? Is it more Thai than the Thai? แต่บางบางบางทีอาจจะขอเป็นภาษาอังกฤษเพราะว่ามันเป็นคอนเซปต์บางอย่างที่ไม่ทราบจะแปลเป็นภาษาไทยอย่างไรนะคะค่ะก็ขออนุญาตเริ่มเลยนะคะก่อนอื่นนะคะก็ขอขอบคุณนะคะ International IDA นะคะที่ In terms of digital campaigning, this is something quite new, I think, for many countries in the world, but extremely, extremely important. important. At, At present, present, in the past election, election on, on the 14th of May, May you, can you can see that, that uh, there are a lot Uh, the, of, of digital campaigning, campaigning. And, and that has been used extensively in um, canvassing, canvassing votes. What, What is important is that if we do use digital, digital platform for, for campaigning, let, let me not mention about, about whether the information, information is uh, misinformation or disinformation or not, uh, uh, but just, just simply Looking at the, uh, uh, if it affects electoral outcome, outcome this, this is something that people should uh, focus on and take an interest in. The second point that I want the participants of this panel, as well as the, the audience, to be thinking about is that if there can be important effects of the electoral outcome, How, how should, should we, we regulate, regulate the using whatever framework is required for digital platform? How, how should we do it? it? But first, first of all, all I would like to have everyone please take a look from another point of view, which is not top down. What, what we have been listening to this morning about political finance, And talking, talking about, about digital campaigning, campaigning. and, and now, now uh, it, it is a case, case of, of the Thailand, Thailand story. story. There, there is one, one thing that is extremely interesting, interesting is, that is that we are actually, are actually looking from, from the top down. down. I, would I would like, like to propose for you to look, look from, from the bottom, bottom upwards. upwards. The question, the question I, I would like to pose, pose is that if you're looking from the top down, down or down uh, to, to the, the top, top from, from the bottom, bottom to the top, top what, does what does that mean? If you're, if you're looking at political finance, finance whether it's, it's a framework, framework law, or it's campaign finance, or digital campaign finance, 
It is like a tree. You have to analyze everything in a larger context, which is a um, a, a, of greater, greater things, things which, means which means you have to look at the forest, forest that, that the tree is in as well. As well. What, what is the forest? forest? It, it is the states, it's a state, state, state agencies, whether it is an independent um, unit, um, unit like, like the ECT, ECT or the Constitution Court, Court or, or the NACC. NACC. Now, you, you are, are trying to regulate the political, political parties. parties. And, and to think, think how, how you can control the capital of these political parties, parties. And, and if it's digital, digital how you, you could regulate it. But, but if you look, you look at it from this point, this point of view, the, the relationship between the party finance and the relationship between party finance, between the various parties and the people and the state, what, what you have, you have to, look to look at those two. two. You, can you can see, see clearly, clearly that in the past few years, years 20 years, years ago, when, when we, sta we started, started the democratization process, process, it is a struggle between the people on the left and the political parties in the middle, and to the right, it is a group of elite um, powers who, who want to maintain, maintain their, their authority. authority. Now, so, so whatever, whatever you're talking about, about, about this tree, about, about the finance, party, party finance, finance, digital campaigning, blah, 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 these are parts of, of the tree. But if, but if you're talking about, about the forest, you have, you have to look at the components and the structure and the factors that affect each and every component. So, so if, if you look at the bottom, bottom up process, process in terms of the campaign finance on the digital platform, platform the um, people, people or the, or the public, public can actually, actually come, come in and, and assist the parties. parties. Now, if, if you compare, compare to other, other countries, countries, most other countries, the problem, the problem that, that may arise uh, from, from the, the tug of war, war is, is between the private group and, and the party. party. But, but no, it, it is the, the political party in Thailand. It's a political party fighting with, with the, the government, government agencies that are regulating them. them. So, in terms, in terms of, of party finance or digital platform, platform it, is it is a struggle against the state who are trying to do a QA control, a quality assurance control. So that is why I would like to propose that when you look at that, uh, at the problem, don't look at it from top down only, not just limiting the parties, not just limiting the capital, the donations, or even, or even if you are using the digital platform, platform you, you have to tell the, the parties that you can do this or you can do not do that. that. You, you really have to look at the relationship between the parties and the, and the people as well, not just simply looking at the state's uh, point of view. As well. This is the first thing I would like to propose, and I think um, our um, panel today, who is looking at the Thailand story, would have a lot of things to um, provide to you. Please open up your mind and to try and look uh, the parties, the academicians, how are they looking at this? So I would like to propose uh, the point of view Right. right. So, so take, take a look, look at everything, everything bottom, bottom up. up. Thank, Thank you. you. The church is a lesson idea. Okay. Okay. okay.
เหมือนกันครับผมนะครับชื่อเป็นผู้ช่วยช่วยนักสุขจัดการนะครับกอง So the deputy election managers. So before we talk, uh, there's a questions from the organizer asking me that the move forward parties, what kind of strategies uh, for the online campaigning? And I know that before we have this strategy, have to see the limitations of uh, the, the party first, and we have to see that. Um, the problems are the challenges in the political arena. What are they? Of course, the first limitations of the move forward party is money. Because our money, we don't have like, like 100 million baht or so. There are 1,000 million baht. No, it's a no. So how do we campaign so that we can spend the money with the most cost effectiveness or at the least money spent possible? And it would bring us to the way that we campaign. So what kind of approach are we going to use? And secondly, the political challenges at that, that time, the Thai society's current status and directions, both for the political problems and also regarding the livelihood of the people. Are, are they still living their life in the, like in the uh, 1990s? Or do they live their life on a social media platform? So, so we, we need, need to really deliberate on these questions, questions first. And that, and that would bring us to, finally, for the Move Forward Party, we, we would design on using the tools available on in this world to campaign for our uh, policies for the elections. So we already see the landscape, the scenario, that, and we decide that the social media is a very important tool and mechanism because first, it requires minimum amount of money, very low cost, and secondly, it has such a broad reach to the people. And, but we have to also understand the limitation, the constraint of social media platform. Let me say that if, if we if we voiced out that Instagram is also a social media platform, an S and S, but how many Thai people use Instagram? Or Facebook is also a social media platform, but the algorithm or the directions of the data process of Facebook has you know been blocked. There's a block on or less visibilities of your posts. So we have to know the social media tools and how to use it wisely. Of course, to, to, to be straightforward, Move Forward Party, we have been accused extensively that we hired the agency, the mega agency, or we hired I.O. Information operations. We hire two for people to work as I.O. I can guarantee that you can look at us that way, but in truth, I stand firm and I guarantee that and, and I, can I can disclose this, this that, that as someone who is involved in the social media activity, activity these are my generations. generations. There's, There's only 10, ten of us. But, but why can we generate the information and have such an a broad reach? So that's the problem. And the, um, the cause is that we deliberate on the political landscape and we figure out the needs of the people. That's why. I would like to reaffirm again that even though the political party A, B, C, D have such a large amount of financial resources, can hire in, you know, big powerhouse ad company, uh, but if the content is something that the people refute, they would not digest it, they would not want it. Even though you have good tools, but the content sucks, it cannot continue. That's, That's why we need to really find out the, the answer, answer from, from the challenges, challenges that you face. So, so I, I might have to refer some, some political party, party but I, I hope that people would understand my intentions. intentions. Do, you do you think, think 
รวมไทยสร้างชาติออพลังประชารัฐ parties what kind of financial clout do they have how much money do they have we know they have large resources in the financial term but why their social media use is ineffective this is just the example but I would like to be honest with you as well using social media platform yes it is low cost and that is a strength and also it could distribute the information quickly and very fast but the problem is that the social media platform it would cause the status that it's like an echo chamber the like Facebook for example if you click on one post Facebook would run its algorithm repeatedly again and again that is the clearest example you see in the US the one who pro Trump you will always see the content that's pro Trump only but those who's pro Democrats or others you just get the same kind of information feeding into you again so coming back to move forward party we all are aware that if we could make this set of information be online it would just be circulated now only might be only 100,000 people seeing it repeatedly again so how do we do so that we can ensure the information would be the, the generated publicly outside of this echo chamber for real I would like to give you this example you would see that this is the accumulations of the information about the political party that used to spend money for their ads political advertising you see billion parties use 1.5 million room thai san charge 437,000 pua thai 130,000 is the lowest one zero baht and you're like what are we are you lying my answer is that this is the truth and the only truth but it does it the, the doesn't mean that we just, just you know zero but we have confidence in it but yes, yes we prepare a budget for the ad, ad. but I would like to use the word our success come quicker than we thought when we expected at the beginning we post the content that we want to generate but it happened to be that the direction that we thought just come at the right moment the people they repeatedly reproduce the content is a UCG user generated content that's why it's not necessary for us to pay for the ad in at all and a clear example the obvious one if you follow up on the elections you would notice that in april after the thai new year or some grand in a social media platform and the people uh bringing the campaigns of um, move forward and reproduce the by themselves more than hundreds and hundreds of percent and we observe that yes we can overcome this echo chamber at the first step that is just a beginning and so how do we ensure that it could turn it into the wording in the ballot so to, to, to distribute the information by one side it's just like a child talking to the parents so that's why we come up with the next campaign that you need to translate the people who's at a fan of you into the organic canvassers that's why we have them the canvasser turned to organic canvassers so we set up a campaign that when you go home you, when, you when you go, go home, home during the long, the long holidays, holidays ask your parents to choose Gaoguan or move forward party ask, ask your grandparents to choose move forward party so that we can turn the online support into on-ground support and we see that the Thai people also have a very obvious um, political um, support for example they they um, um, making their own t-shirts etc I haven't seen this for a long time in the other election that I observed for more than 10 years 
mostly election that you just stay still waiting for the election day. But for these elections, I believe that one thing that Move Forward Party can achieve as a success without having expected such a, and a strong support is that we turn politics into a part of people's life, making people able to express their opinions that they want to choose this party and they want to support this party. Give, give me a second, please. So, so this brings bring us to the, the, the meat of the story. So how do we get the people to bring the content to reproduce it or to uh, disseminate it? The answer is that what we need to do as a campaigner, involve and have an impact of the life of the people who like our parties, for example. We have 300 policies. Uh, we come up with this 300 policy, no matter what the target audience. That wants to be the policy that responds to what you look for. And yes, they, they will think this political party talk about you. They're concerned about you. So they're ready to reproduce those content or disseminate it. If you ask us whether we are the first party who's doing this, no. We're not the first political party who's doing this. The first politician who did this was Kun Chachat Sitipan, the Bangkok governor. There's a, he has the policy 200 um, policies at um, for the Bangkok governor's campaign. But Move Forward Party is the only party that you know come up strongly with this, and we came up with the 300 policy. But I have to say that we argue that do we need to really do that much, and this one political party have to handle such an intensive amount of work. But it is an idea, and is proven that it could continue. But I did not affirm that it would be a success formula for the next election because each of the elections it's come with a change, and there's also it's a development. But each of the elections. We need to accumulate the information. We have to have the knowledge base. We have to read the sentiment of the people. And we have to collect everything we learn and make an informed decisions at the election time on how do we organize our campaign. And the next question I have, the, the questions about the legal framework, I will talk about it at the end. And, and this, this is, is the example, example of um, how, how we can make, make them, the, the people know that the uh, elections campaign and uh, move forward parties really have the policy involving their life. And when they have a buy-in and that they want to generate the content, they would uh, reproduce our uh, policies, policies and agenda, agenda without, without us having, having to pay a single buy for them. But, but it might have the, the legal, legal implication, implication, but I will talk about that later. So, so this is a page selling, selling T-shirt. They love our party so much. So, so they had an ad, ad for us on Facebook. Or on this one. This is, this is a page on Facebook that is, that is like a parody, a satire for political um, issues. Issue. So, so they really cheer us so much, and so they turn the policy into a pictures. And, and we, we are trying to have a campaign that responds to what people look for. And, and the next question is, eventually at the end, the online campaigning, would it be the futures of the elections? The answer is, at the end, elections, we, I say it's not enough just to do online campaigning, but I stand firm that the, if you don't do online campaigning, it is a no-no also, because it's like you assess the way you live your life, the easiest way, just observe yourself. How do you spend your time during the day? How do you live your life? And, and from statistically, eighty-five percent of Thai, Thai people access internet, internet, have access to internet, to internet. and more than seventy percent of Thai people are addicted to internet. And, and if, if you pay a closer look at the TV, 
and you are, you are familiar, familiar right? right? If you, if you want, want to know about the news, the current trends, trends um, you have to turn on the TV and the radio. radio. But, but it happens to be that currently, TV and radio has to shift their mode. They have to disrupt themselves and be and, and have online presence. So. The campaigning you need to have the online presence as well. But um, all in all, online world have a risk of having a high echo chamber is probabilities because of the AI system, the algorithm system, everything would be repeated. So that brought us to making the campaigning um, move to the people in the up countries or to, to the, the real waters, waters. just as I say. It, it turned, turned to be the policy that when you go home, get, get your family to choose Gaoglai, to vote for Gaoglai. What kind of tools for this uh, campaigning, for these elections, that is the most successful for us? As I showed earlier, TikTok. The TikTok, TikTok applications, applications, the Chinese app, app that, that even, even though the US is fearing it, the, the, the US are now banning TikTok. TikTok. We, we teach, teach each other that even the government, government I, have I have to ban, ban TikTok. TikTok. It's, it's really, really brainwashing your, your, your whole, whole, you know, like, like idea, idea and everything. everything. But, but it doesn't, doesn't mean that the app is bad, but, but the point in case is. When you, when you know, know the tools, tools that you use for the campaigning, campaign, you, you have to understand its nature. And for, for us, our team, team we studied the TikTok, TikTok applications before the elections for almost two years. This, this is normal for the, for the work that we study. Each, each of the tools, tools about its functions, about its pros and cons, and its, cons, and its characteristic. characteristic. And we found out that. First, TikTok applications, it would be used in such and such manner. And OK, we keep that in mind. But during the elections, just a few months before the elections, the trend of TikTok is just a boom. It's a booming up. Thai people are really migrating to TikTok, becoming so addicted. It's like exponential. So it's just the serendipity, just that it happened to be that time. And we noticed also that Move Forward Party was successful in using these applications with a high success rate. And what about other SNS? Facebook, yes, we use that. And also Twitter. But we have to consider each of the SNS. What are its distinctive characteristics? For example, Facebook, it's quite Dry. dry, let me use this word. word. It's, it's quite dry. dry. The, the application for Facebook, it's, it's, it's also, also blocked, blocked the visibility of the post. It, it has a very high echo chamber. So, so Facebook, Facebook, we delegated it as an application for broadcasting the important news. It's, it's more very formal. formal. So, so if we want to have, have the announcement or post an uh, important point, point, we use Facebook. Facebook. And, and Twitter. Twitter. We know, we know that, that for Twitter, Twitter is it's an application, application that, that the young generations, generations like, like, like to use, use because, because it's an application that you can discuss and have a the, uh, very, very interactive dialogue, dialogue and argument. So we, so we used uh, t this, this um, app to, to exchange, exchange the opinions. opinions. Uh, we, we used the TikTok app to listen to the opinions. opinions. Sorry, Sorry, I made, I made a mistake, mistake about the app. We use Twitter, but, but for the exchange of opinion. But when it's TikTok app, we know the algorithm of TikTok. Is that who watched one clip or two clip that is from a uh, move forward party? The TikTok app would repeatedly um, on this, uh, the content from the same source. So what happened is that I really dislike the move forward party with a strong passion, but then I just listen to it so that I know so that I can just put all the blame on the move forward party. But when I click and listen to it, and I listen to the second and third clip, what happened is that the algorithm of the TikTok app would 
running the information that involve a move of a party only to me who hate um, move of a party with a vengeance. But from hating it when you start, you know, absorbing information inside of you, then this is not that bad. This party is all right. It's okay. And then we can turn the hater are the suspicious uh, one, the doubtful one, into, okay, let's give it a try. Let's give this party a, 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 a chance. But you need to know the characteristic of the, each of the application first. And then the loophole in the legal framework for the political finance of the election, I can say that according to the election law of Thailand, uh, the campaigning of the central political parties. Yeah, we have the cap of 44 million baht or 1.5 million US dollars. And to be honest, to campaign for the whole country with a 60 million population with 44 million baht. How, how do we do that? That's why we realize that, okay, Beside low cap or uh, low the limitation, and also with our party is poor, so it brought us to using the social media platform. And I would be very honest with you that to use the social media platform, the control and monitoring is very low. I, I just make an example. I don't mean case. Say, I love Move Forward Party. I'm the strong supporter. So I set up an avatar page, like an I.O. page. And I pay them so that they can do the campaign from outside the countries for the elections. I say, yes, we can do it because no one can really track, right? That this page, that is really strong supporter of Move Forward Party, it really belongs to the Move Forward Party or third party who is really a fan of our party or just from the people who love the parties. So. This is, this is still, still a loophole in the, in the monitoring, monitoring and controlling oversight, but, 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 but we, we don't, don't have that because by the time we have, have to pay for the elections, elections it's, it's very stressful, stressful for us. And we want also, also to have the money, money just like other political parties. Party. I know that it was the, the former uh, elections, uh, the one party used 4,000 million baht for the election campaign. That was in the year 2019. And I can say that. The, f the limitations of the campaigning budget that is low, I know that ECT realized that. The government also know that this amount of budgeting is just to trick yourself, just to fool yourself. I can say that, that you know, I live so near the election unit. The officers of the voting point, they're the one who pay for the vote buying, like 1,000, 2,000 baht. And my mom received 2,500 baht. The officers of the ballot point are the one who pay Pay for the board buying, you know, who, who would distribute the board buying money? This is Thailand. And aside from the legal loophole for the overseeing of the money spent on the social media online campaign, the another problem is that the lack of unities, the uncertainties of um, implementing the law about political finance of CECT. I would like to give you an example. A provincial ECT uh, answer one thing, but the central ECT say a totally different thing. I was so confused. Sometimes I call the provincial ECT and say, did you talk to the central, your own headquarter? Don't just say something that you you don't know for sure, please. So that is an implementation problem. And the third point, the third problem, is really a loophole of the law. For example, it trends back to the very low cap, 44 million baht, for the election campaign. The problem we talked this morning is that in the elections, we have observer, correct? And these elections, I just estimate that we have about 100,000 units for the uh, voting point. 
So, so if you want to send an uh, observer to all the warning point, is uh, 100,000. And the minimum uh, wages per day is, uh, when you calculate it, 35 million baht. So uh, the PCT say that the compensation for the observer, it has to come from the quota of political party. So it means that I have to use the 44 million baht for the campaigning. The 35 million baht has to be paid for the, the election observer. So my question is, is that what did the ECT thought of or think about when you draft this law? I always argue this point with the ECT, not counting the, the so many people think, for example, cannot sell merchandise online. I don't know whether ECT has, they never used Shopee and Lazada. So this is what I reflect to the ECT all the time, because I argue with them since uh, 2019 when we were the future forward parties. So, if you can only come up with this kind of law, you can just use the new graduate. That's it. That's it, That's it all for me. Thank you. Right. I think the format is now to have all the speakers present. And, and then, then uh, there'll be a question and answer session. session. But I would like to summarize just, just a little bit. bit. This, this is something that's quite interesting. interesting. Because, because in the past, past election, election everyone, everyone says, says that the Move Forward Party, party Peter should, should have been, been uh, um, the Prime Minister, but an online, online Prime Minister. Minister. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's all, all he can be, be uh, like, like an online, online prime minister. minister. And, and at, at the same time, time there are large parties that has a huge amount of funding. funding. So, so the question, question is, is that, that in, in the case that a party has a lot of money, and, and then they, they use a foreign company, company to, to influence or to try and sway the electoral, electoral votes, votes. As, as a political, political party, party or uh, who is working uh, on, on a political party, party what sort of prevention measures, measures can we take? take? You, you will see the point of view of the, the um, academicians. academicians. โอเคค่ะเอ่อก่อนๆต้องขออภัยผู้ฟังเป็นภาษาไทยก่อนเลยนะคะเพราะว่าภาษาไทยคือไม่แข็งแรงค่ะขอโทษค่ะ I will try and speak in Thai but if I slip in some English words I'm I'm sorry about that I'm going to talk about a small research that I'm working on is about the latest election campaign about uh, the latest Election, election um, and, and how, how it affects the electoral, the electoral votes. votes. Actually, Actually Kunmar Wood has, has shown you about, about campaign, campaign financing. financing. Certainly, there are, there are many parties that uses a lot of money for ads on Facebook. Facebook. Uh, uh, the, the Move Forward, forward Party, you, you can see here, it's zero, zero right, right at this edge, edge on the right. right. And, and also, also the posting of social media. media. We, we measure, measure the various, various posts on social media. media. This, this is, is from, from March to April. April. Actually, Actually, the party, party that engages with social media, media the, the most, most is Pertai. Thai. And, and the second, second uh, in rank, rank is or Move Forward Party. party. But, but you can see that every party sees the importance of um, the social media as tools for election. Uh, as mentioned by Kunwar Wood, it's cheap and it's to the point. But, you know, from what you see, they are not the ones who win the election, right? Even, Even though they, they engage with the people, people and they talk with the people a lot during, during the social, or the, play, the, the ones who used, um, who, who play so many ads, ads they, they might not have won elections. elections. What, what I, I am, am looking at in, in my research for campaigning concerns disinformation and misinformation. And misinformation. 
you know, what those are, you know, false um, data that has been posted. I have seen, um, you know, when Marcos Jr. won the election in the Philippines, there were a lot of misinformation during that time, and it actually... Uh, create a win for Marcos Jr. So I, we were concerned, I was concerned that whether this would happen in Thailand or not. So for the campaign, when I was, I was thinking before the election, what are our expectations um, for that election? First, we expect to see a lot of intense use of disinformation, misinformation during campaigning. So these are, is our theory according to the Philippines model. And, and we, we expect, expect to see a diversification, a diversification of content, content the use of video-based video platforms, platforms, for example. example. It, it, it might be Instagram, might be, might be TikTok. TikTok. That, that Kun mentioned, had, what, uh, had Kun Barawood has mentioned. Um, um, there, there might be long uh, content. content. It, it might be used on Twitter or Facebook. Facebook. Uh, we, expect we expect to see a bare variety of content. content. And we, our next concern, or what we expect to see in the election, was to actually voter suppression. This is the model, the American model. You know, they um, actually duped the election uh, electors that, okay, the booth, you know, is here, but it's actually the, uh, not the right location, you know. They falsify the information for the voters. This happened in the past two uh, elections in America, uh, where they provided wrong information to the voters so that they totally missed the election. And the last, what, what we expect to see is micro-targeting of voters through the social media segmentation to customize and try to expand their reach to the voters. So these are the expectations. It's something we don't want, but we expect to see that in the election. All right. Apart from that, uh, there are certain contents about TikTok. Because, because I, I think TikTok, TikTok is extremely, extremely important and interesting, and interesting which, which provides uh, another layer um, for manipulating, manipulating votes. votes. I would, I would like, like, like you to see the two cases, cases um, that, that is happened before this election, election the Marcos Jr. Election, election and Kun Chat Chat. Both, Both elections happen near, near about the same time. time. They, they both use TikTok, TikTok for campaigning. campaigning. For Marcos Jr., he, he created a new brand, brand which is TikTok. And, and then he created, created content, content which is not related to politics. politics. They, they don't talk about politics. politics. He, he talked about, you know, raising dogs, you know, dogs, you know um, making cups of, of coffee, coffee, trying to create you know, a, a new, new image, image for himself, himself uh, and, and to delete, delete or erase, erase the legacy of his father. Uh, this, this actually was effective in the Philippines because the young voters uh, actually voted for Marcos Jr. And, and we wondered why. There were certain hypotheses that the young generation have new liberal ideas. They may not have voted that way. They should have been voting for liberal, more liberal aggressive. But actually, they voted for Marcos. So, so there is, was a mechanism of rebranding himself. himself. And, and the new um, generation did not have this chair memory or the image of Marcos Sene. They did not know how bad it was or how difficult it was. For They saw, you know, Marcos Jr. as a, a you know, all right, and, and he's a, a, a good, cool, cool young leader. So, so the, the education, education of the Philippines and the curriculum has been set up to actually try to erase, erase the image of the Marcos um, rule and, and the legacy. legacy. Now, now into also, also in, in terms of Kunchachat, Kunchachat actually talked at ACCT, FCCT, that he mentioned that he won the election because of TikTok. 
And, you know, during the campaigning, he didn't know why, you know, his team they made him do squats and pick up stones, you know, during the campaigning. And then he asked the team, and the team said, oh, actually the followers of Chachad uh, in TikTok are not voters. They are the sons and daughters of voters. The fan base of Kun Chachad is 7 to 12 years old. They are not even voters, you know. But what happened was, like Kun Mara would say, yeah, yeah, you, you tell, tell your, your dad, dad, you tell your mom, mom that Kun Chachad Chacha is great, you know, he is the strongest uh, uh, minister in the whole of Thailand. Of Thailand. And, so and so if the father, father and mother does not, not have any choice, or they may be wavering, wavering between some, some parties, uh, that, uh, that, uh, uh, that there was a condition that was polarized, we might want someone who is more neutral. So, you know, the young children can influence the father and mother. It, it is a mechanism which is quite, quite new, new. You, know, you know, before that, that even though it was a social media platform, we, we would, would not, uh, you know, it was, would, what, it's, it's, it's just, just the voters, voters right, who choose, choose and, and not the children of the voters who try to influence their parents. Their parents. So, so actually, the TikTok is an interesting, interesting platform in, to use for uh, uh, canvassing votes, votes, but there are also other problems. The next slide, please. Yeah. You know, from, from our expectations, expectations that we had, what, what are, are the realities during the, the um, election? election? The, the, this, this is what, is what the team found. found. This, this is, is uh, we would like to share our initial findings. findings. We're not, not going to go very deep in, in but what, what we find is that we don't, we don't find a lot of fake news or misinformation. They, they did not use uh, fake, fake information, information. They, they do not try to mislead the voters or manipulate the data. Actually, Actually, there's an explanation. explanation. It, it is because the election rules were actually quite strict, you know, for the, any uh, the use of this information and misinformation. The election uh, rule since 2018. So this act has been used since the last election, election and, and is still in place. place. So, so what, what is quite, quite interesting is that uh, it is uh, uh, last time, you know, you know it's, it's you probably hear that, that some, some of the voters, voters were caught and then were uh, uh, fined for, for sharing false, false information. information. Uh, it's actually quite, quite contradictory. Mm. Mm. During, during uh, uh, Prayut's rule. But, but right, right now, now it actually, it actually goes into the details uh, with very strict rules, not just the party, but for those who are linked to the parties or the supporters. They are actually controlled by this act as well. So that was why there is sort of strict control. You remember when the ECT actually called in some of the political parties to explain what they were doing, but um, this, this did, did not um, happen earlier on. And, and we found some diversification of content, content, as mentioned, and, and as, as this is what we expected. expected. The contents, the contents would change, change. the contents were uh, applied according to the platform. We, we have organic canvassers on TikTok, as, as mentioned. So this, so this is, is quite interesting and exciting for Thai politics. politics. And, and we found, found certainly, certainly, really, micro-targeting micro of voters to ads, to segmentations. But one, but one thing that is uh, uh, in, interesting is the use of social media influencers pre-election, pre actually pre-announcement of the uh, 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 pre-actual um, dates that, uh, that the campaigning, campaigning is allowed. Is allowed. These influencers actually did not disclose that they are, you know, certain parties' voter. But the presentation is like we, you know, hire vlockers to take them somewhere, to go overseas and create content, and then suddenly they would talk about this party.
said, oh, you know, it's close to election time. We should go to the... It is a presentation um, like what the fan base of that YouTuber is, uh, is following. But then you also insert content that is politically motivated. You said, oh, he mentioned this party, so I should look, maybe look at it to, to that. So, so it, it is uh, follows, follows the theory uh, of um, socialization, of, um, you, know, you know, a little bit of like a grooming of the, the fans. You know, after you listen to this a lot, you might believe it, that it is true. Even though we do not find this information, you know, during the election, but post-election, when, when there, there is, is no, no more uh, law, law it's, it's like, like a Pandora, Pandora box. Everything, Everything comes out. out. You can see all this misinformation, disinformation, in rampant. You know, you, know, you say, say the Move Forward, forward Party won. won. It was, it was unexpected, unexpected, right? So, so that, that was why some, some people were unhappy with, with the results. results. So, so that was, was why there are many campaigns, campaigns that goes uh, against the Move Forward Party. party. Is, is it true? Is this is what you're doing? doing? Is it like, like college, college school? school? Say, for, for example, example. Another, another interesting point is in choosing the Move Forward, forward party. party. Then, then, you know, the US, US would actually intervene. intervene. They, they are going to build a base, base in Chiang Mai, for example. example. And, and lastly, uh, uh, that's that still going on, on is says, uh, who, who are, are they going to be teaming, teaming up with, with you, you know? know? So, so a, a lot, lot of, of um, misinformation, disinformation came out post-election. Post Another, Another point I forgot, I forgot to add to, to the slide is that the, the disinformation that, that happens in line, line or in the various apps, apps that, that are in the description, description that, that cannot be tracked. Be tracked. You, know, you know, in line, you have, you have line, line groups, groups, right? You can, you can see that, see that uh, sometimes the, the fake, fake information is shared about politics. politics. Is that true? true? But, but it's, it's been, been shared everywhere. everywhere. The, the risk is that it is even worse than social media. media. In trend, in trend inscription, inscription it, it means that you, you who is the sender and the receiver, receiver knows that who sent it. The application actually cannot you know, pull out um, certain parts of your conversation unless it has been approved. But, you know, uh, you cannot take a look. The ECT cannot look into it. Uh, even regulatory um, units or body cannot actually quite control this. Um, uh, this, this is similar, similar to misinformation, misinformation about, about, you know, treatments, treatments for cancer, cancer that, that are falsified or that are not verified. Next, Next slide. slide. So that, that is the end of my presentation, presentation but I would like to um, also uh, leave with you as a thought. Uh, you know, those who invest a lot into the platform for ads on Facebook, there's no guarantee that they are going to be win, win winners. I feel that social media is a medium, right? It depends on how you use it. If the content is bad, it will not become viral. It's not quite related as to how much you use it. If you, if you don't know, know how to create, create good content, content or, you know, some, some content people might not be interested in at all. So, so the top spender may not translate into a winner, winner for the election. Another, Another point is that the responsibility of the platform, platform. this actually can be discussed a lot more because, because you know, the platform that, that once, once you see a disinformation in the platform, platform whether it's during, during the election or any time, is it, is it possible to engage, to engage a platform for them to look after the content, how much you can engage and how much you can make them responsible? Let me, Let me go, go back, back to the Philippines. Philippines. During, during that election last year, a guideline was issued for political ads. It means, it means that, that it, they, they see it as important. important. But for Thailand, there's no guideline at all. 
for political ads, uh, for Meta as well. So they try to advocate this prior to that. The platform do come in, but they, are not, they did not do anything. No guidelines was issued like the Philippines. Another point is that the legal status of the platform that has been widely discussed. It's quite funny. We call them platform, but there is still a debate whether they are platform or publisher of social media, Facebook, Twitter. The Facebook, Twitter, they invest for lobbying of more than 10 million to have the corporate call themselves call them platform, not publisher. It means that there must be responsibility, legal responsibility, certain legal responsibility that they don't want to take up, right? TikTok is even worse. You know, when you ask the public policy team, they call themselves like an AI company. They call themselves an AI company, not a social network, not a social media. That's how they say it. They compare themselves to YouTube and not Twitter. That is, that is quite interesting, interesting because how do you then manage or do you request for assistance or cooperation? And they said, no, we are just a content provider. We feed video for you. You know, it depends on what you want to see. And the AI manages all this content, but it's based on your interest, right? So I'm not, I'm not involved. But you do, we, I do have to give credit to TikTok, but they do talk to ECT. And they, and they said, said that they, they, go, they cut out all, all the political ads. But, but what, what is a political ad? You know, just, just in case Kim Kim Wood has mentioned that, that, you know, you use TikTok a lot. How, How are you separating, you know, know politically uh, or organic conversor, um, uh, or, you know, the public, the public. I'm, I'm, I'm not pointing any fingers, fingers but you say how which one is paid support which one is not you know they, they might use it or they might not use it how do you separate them and, and would, would the platform uh, would, would the platform, platform be able to differentiate, to differentiate or distinguish, distinguish between those two, two. And, and finally anything, anything that I told, told you today there is no real in-depth research uh, about, about misinformation, misinformation or disinformation that has been released on online. How, How has that affected the election? Or, or there's, there's no uh, effect, effect at all? all. This, this is from observation, observation but there's no real research. research. Uh, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm going, going to be working on this next, next. But, but there's, there's no real research that's linked how disinformation or misinformation or even real, real information how, How does, does it affect, affect the, the results, results, the electoral results? results. So, so uh, that's, that's what, what I want to leave with you. you. Thank you. Uh -huh. So these are all the perspectives from the Professor Surachimi. Very interesting. So it would be a good for thought about what the Professor said that. That would be some of the platform that would be just the end-to-end, -end, like vendors and receivers only, that, for example, like line application. And it would bring us to the, um, maybe there's more chance to abuse the information that the, for example, the government agencies or CSO could not even or have difficulties to, to, to track. And, and this is one thing we need to be careful about. Um, our speaker, the last one, from, from, uh, has the opinions and would express the viewpoint from the civil society. So, Kun Wasing, please the floor is you. So, good afternoon to all of you. And everyone knows we speak about many different things and also about the ad. I am the maybe the last one of the sessions, but I might be able to present some other viewpoint. And I have the observation as well that right now we are it's like we are trying to find that the information operations that have an impact on or as an influence to change the decisions on voting decisions. So how, so how do we track, track? that? This is really I.O. This is really the paid 
um, um, maybe no mini painted or a blank check. So it's like you are playing hide and seek in the dark room. And I encountered this also. I have a project together with a number of my network. It's a project called DU. Um, we work on collecting the information and data and trying to find the ecosystem all the way to verify on the ecosystem in the information transfer on the election campaign. And we collect a, a number of uh, information first, the interactions, and second, the content on the disinformation, and third, the problems about the content, as the professor said. And we, we found out a similar thing. It's a limited, and we found post-elections. After the election results has been clear, who is the major, uh, majority party that win the vote? So there's more disinformation that's been released. So if I can have the next slide, please. I would probably answer some of the questions, but not all. I might alternate between them so that we can continue with the flow. This is the information collected from the Twitter and Facebook. That these are the interactions of the information. So we collect. Um, Nine, almost, almost one million, million content, content from a more than 12, uh, 10,000 account, and, and we collected from the form, form, uh, form form account, former account, account official account from, account from the candidate, candidate former account, account, and also official's political party account, account and also uh, observe the account that has a close relationship with the um, official's account. account. So, so all in all, about 10,000 account. account. So, so in the pictures, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that it's all in Thai. Thai. I'm not very proficient in English, but I'm welcoming all the questions if you have. So the first right circle is the communities of the information of political party A. So we said A, B, C, because if we disclose the name of political party, it would be dangerous. And we don't know how to take responsible. Uh, text responsibility for that. So use a political party A, B, C. And the circle represents the account of each of the accounts. Account. So it represents each of the accounts. Account. And the, the, the big uh, circle uh, demonstrates that, that it would be the point of release of the content. Of the content. So, so the blue one, one on top, the official's account of political party A. A. That would be the main like, like mothership to release the information that would be shared from um, a reputable supporter and also from reputable news media and they have the interactions in the community and you see which community are more uh, have this then supporter and more reaction that would be bigger in circle and the important uh, observation for this one is that you will see the purple, no, the uh, gray and dark purple. It might not be clear on the pictures here. And we discuss among our team. And how do we define it? Can we define it as IO? Is it IO? And the conclusion is the same as everyone because there's so, so much of the loophole. I don't know how to say whether it's a yes or a no. It's a very complicated ecosystem and the technological uh, intricacies. So we cannot find out exactly how do we say. So we try to find a non human one. For example, what in one account, 24 hour, post 300 messages. Um, and then just, just have, have only 23 seconds of, of rest during, during the frequency. frequency. So the frequency of the point is extremely high. high. And, and we also have an argument that if one account is a big, have, have multiple, multiple people behind it, this is wrong. They, they are really a human being behind it, but just multiple number. So, so we collect the information and explain it in a way that there's some suspicious behavior that is like really non human behavior. But are they AI? I cannot define for sure are they, be, uh, are they being hired, so it's no clear information to support that decision as well. So this is the first picture, and with the uh, questions about the trend, we collect about one million content. At first we thought it would, it would be a lot of like strong, extreme argument, a lot of attack, but we found that 40 percent 
about 400,000 messages are about the uh, campaign, about highlighting the uh, ideologies of the political party and policy and strategies more than the, uh, the strong harsh word. And second is the information for the elections and how to verify your name and the number of the political parties. And, and that, that would be secondary information. And uh, we're very limited, limited this information pre-election pre day. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot to inform that, that these are pictures in April, pre-election, April. And the next one. Uh, that I got, I got answered, answered. which, which political, political party reaped reap the benefit? I think this is self-explanatory self in a way that, that who, which, which party benefit, benefit from the online campaigning and, and show the interaction the thereof. The next, uh, next picture, picture please. And it's, it's about the total amount of money spent for the Facebook ad. And this information, I think it's from the same source, so Facebook ad, depending on what day you collect the information. And this one, my picture doesn't look very appealing, but I crop it out. Um, but I have a few observations. This one is a seven-day pre-election, which is a seven of May. Five out of ten accounts, official account, so they collect only the official political party account and the the provincial candidate and we, them, they, they, there is no collection of the data in a formal way. And some political party might not show the number as an overview. As a, as a total, total but, but I want to show that five out, out of ten of, of the political party that have the uh, the app on Facebook, Facebook is that they get the MP into the parliament. parliament. So five out, out of ten who are willing to pay for the app get the seat. seat. But, that but that is just my observation. observation. You cannot, you cannot assume, assume that if you pay for Facebook ad, it, it would lead you to into the wind or sit in the parliament. But, but they have additional observations. observations. After I worked as an observer on the digital ecosystem, ecosystem. So aside from being cheap or cost-effective, it is a trend that it's like you are up to date, you are cutting edge. For example, uh, if, if I, have I have to take responsibility, so please share the responsibility with me. That is one party that gets just one party list seat and also get the constituency in the provinces that we say there's a big dynasty political plan, for example, like um, Chat Thai, they are exchanging some of the identity on Facebook, they do vlog, they present the video, they present something that is more up to date. But at, but at the same, same time, time, they have the base, the, the wording base, base and that, that I can assume that they have the wording base in the constituents, constituents mostly, but it doesn't relate it to the need that require the online campaign. campaign. Because I believe that using the online campaign would bring to the party list and uh, uh, really awareness in the social uh, the as, as an as well. So, so this is it, is it for the observations. observations. And, and the next, next question is, is about, about the regulations of the ECT. Uh, about, about the ECT um, regulation, is it in alignment, alignment with the digital trend? trend? I want to give you an example. If, if a number of you see before the election, you saw the post of the secretary, Kun So Wang, who gave the interview through the mobile phone in his office, you see on in the comment section that Large, large majority asking where's, where's the computer, computer because he only have the amulet, Buddha amulet and Buddha statue in his room. And there's no computer. So it's even for me, who's a new generation, who use mobile phone as and as regularly. I feel that that's still the complication of the digital world. And it's very hard to decipher everything. And what we see visually, as you say, like a forest, we see only a few leaves. Uh, uh, but at, at the same time, time for those with ECT, um, who involved directly with the election, that, they, they could maybe only spell the word, but don't know what uh, what it's involved at all. And also for the ILO, when you do the name, uh, you know, later like campaign for the public hearing, and is this the role of the ECT to facilitate? 
and the ECT have a rules and regulations for the uh, the citizen to to sign in the petition form. I'm not sure whether they can do it online, but. But, but the ECC said they don't want to do it on uh, the paper bag. So they said they want to see the or flash drive as an as a petition only. So I want to show you a highlight of the regulations. But if we want to be fair with the ECT, I believe that all the rules and regulations is it's just a part of the bureaucratic system that's trying to facilitate or provide convenience to the society. But the Thai bureaucratic system is very traditional and it has been mon um, manipulated or monopolized by the leading elite only. And to, to expedite, to make it accessible uh, in a quicker manner, it's very difficult. The, the way they try to solve it is always uh, a launching the, um, the an ad or a bill. I believe that NCPO have the one-stop service, but I'm not sure whether it's been applied. But it's the same thing. Is that the, the you know the cashless society? But everyone have to download the applications, and then even though you have a smart card, you cannot use it. And I would like to go quickly. And the next one is the spending uh, for the online spend of the political party. Is it transparent? How do I say that? When you talk about transparency, even though you confirm it is transparent, you have to look at the process, whether it's auditable, whether you could monitor and validate it or verify it. Even if you could even well, you know, check it, you cannot be 100% sure that it is transparent. And also, I want to talk about the TikTok as a brainwashing tool. I would like to uh, refuse that. And so, even though TikTok is kind of like a brainwash, but TikTok declared together with the ECT, they set up the center for election to fight against disinformation and misinformation. So, to use TikTok for campaign um, campaigning online is not a misinformation, a disinformation, because they have this unit already. You see, everyone look at uh, move forward. Forward, but those, those who want, want to attack TikTok for misinformation and disinformation, you, you have to ask ECT and TikTok what did that senders do? They, they have no information so aside from when, when they declared the opening of the center. What else did they do? What function has they delivered? And for the Facebook ad, just as everyone say, and I just would like to fill in a little bit more that is in relation to the project that I'm doing with my network is that the information, for example, like Twitter, Twitter allow us to assess the and have the in, to see the interactions of the account quite significantly. Maybe a little bit of that before Elon must become the owner that that. You can, you can use it to, to communicate, communicate in the technical, technical way, and, and but Elon, Elon Musk, Musk he's is on board and he's become more commercialized. So, so it's, it's quite, quite difficult, difficult to get the uh, uh, information from the say the account back office. So, so the, but Facebook they're trying to use a way that say they have the tools, they have their own mechanism, the private one that they can uh, solve the problem according to what you say, but they would not allow you. To, to know, know what they, they do. do. They're, They're trying, trying to just explain. explain. For example, this information well, regarding the election. First to say it has to be a formal official account and to use the ad. Uh, it, it would have the headline that this content is from the political party ad and it would uh, it takes three days to verify to be for the approval of the post. Uh, not like um, it would be longer than a normal ad and also to collect the information of the Facebook ad for seven years if it's about the election. But at the same time, the access of the information or the negotiations to make this kind of process more transparent and more participatory, I think Facebook still not giving the enough sufficient answer for this. And they're trying to shirt away, uh, string away from this. And uh, this information, for those who work on this information, we also encounter the lie information uh, in the lie app. That we all know that how do we collect information? When we collect information, it might be against a uh, technical uh, methodology because it's like the end to end communication. But when you share it, you, you, it widespread to 200 people, for example. So, as an as digitalization, it's not about misinformation, disinformation, or election alone, but the algorithms of all the platforms are trying to go into directions of commercialization, getting the benefit. 
it, it might sound bad, bad. Yeah, yeah, because, because it is bad, bad. but I do have TikTok as well. So when I watch, when they teach how to post the ad, and we say that, what, what do you think, why do you think people buy? They buy it from the content? No, they buy it because of the emotions. So the algorithm would serve that. They would make everyone um, decided based on their emotion or sentiment. So I, who understand algorithm more might be able to catch up that, okay, you need, you need to, to take a deep breath, breath. Be, um, some, so, that so that you don't, don't be in the echo chamber. But, but those, those, are those people who cannot, cannot catch up of the, the, this kind of the platform, platform um, tricks, tricks um, and, and gimmick. And, and the, the last part that I would like to say is about, is about the CSO, CSO support, support to the monitoring and of the spending on the online campaign. How can, can we do that? that? Very, Very difficult, because, because it's a highly complex. complex. But if you ask me, it's coming back to the basic again. So how do we do so that we can catch up to it, or at least we verify the information before sharing? We need to understand and believe that this might be misinformation or disinformation. You have to have some doubt before sharing, or maybe have a disclaimer that this is, this is the source, source, so you need to verify the source. source. I believe that the freedom to believe or to make the decisions. So what is fact? What is truth? It's hard to prove. What is the truth, right? But um, how do we understand it? How do we know that this kind of narrative or this set of misinformation are meaning what and how? what kind of functions does it try to deliver? So I think being aware is very important. And, and I, I would like to add also for the CSO, CSO how do we do so that ETT can support the uh, uh, monitoring of the online campaign sprint? Very, very difficult to... I might think, think the same way as Kun Po, Kun Warawut from Move Forward Party, that there's so much loophole, for example, the paying from, from, from outside of the country, from foreign countries, or cryptocurrencies, or like the Thai, very Thailand, you know, you instead of giving the money, you give the Buddha amulet, which is pricey. So, so at least the ECT should enable the people to find the information about the elections and actually provide the convenience for the water to really access the information easily. Like for example, we watch, we receive the information of the location of each voting unit only three or four days before the election day. And this, this is, is always the case. case. But, but do they, do they have, have the information? information? To be fair, I'm, I'm not sure whether ECT would blame me or scold me, but this is just my own observations. observations. The, the water can verify the rights and voting um, um, before the election, election day. They, they can, can check where, where they are, where is the ball of point that they need to go. And, and they, you, you can check that on the website, website the ECT also, also website, website so, so that they know in advance, right? But I know that ECT have that location, but they intentionally not giving us this information. So I don't want to say that they are confiscate the information, but this is just my observations. And next week, I believe we have Q and A, right? This is so, so much fun. fun. I think um, many, many people have questions, questions definitely. So, so I would like to open, open up the floor uh, in a few issues, issues which I have already mentioned. mentioned. First, I wanted to uh, inform you about using digital platform for electoral campaign. campaign. The would, would be, be a group of people, people. Who, who might be important, important whether they have uh, in, terms in terms of um, funding, funding in, terms in terms of network, of network. This, this is, is the elderly, elderly people. people. The elderly, the elderly people, people do not use TikTok, TikTok or, or any other, other social media a lot. But, but for the, the line, line application, application 
They use this a lot. Therefore, if in the future, any digital platform that is to be used for electoral campaign, I think the party do not give importance to these traditional channels or methods for electoral campaigning. What I am like to point out is that if one country wants to have a healthy democracy, the citizens must be well informed. They must have correct information. The use of digital platform for electoral campaign in the, in the future We've been using a lot, but I think in the future, it's going to be even more used, right? Because the new generation uh, and the larger amount of the population will be using it as well. So I don't know whether the political parties or civil society or academics. Um, I want to make you think about how to solve this problem, you know, to promote this group who is not adapt to the digital platform uh, to be able to access the correct information. Secondly, vote buying, it can be bought everywhere on any platform, whether it's offline or online. The point is, if, if there, there is, is vote, vote buying online, online who, who is, is going to be checking? checking? Definitely, Definitely, it must be a state, state official. official. State officials are most are not teenagers, teenagers you know. They, they don't sometimes, sometimes have the skills to check or trace these illegal activities. activities. They, they might buy th vote through games. games. Say, if you go in and compete in a game, if you win, if you lose, then you can, you know, get money later. Because offline, that's what they did. Vote buying two games. So with digital platform, for vote buying, can, can political, political parties, parties pulling up, up of measures to try and mitigate abuse of, of these channels. channels. And, and thirdly, you, you know, know that I.O. is real. Now, now the, where, where does, does I.O. come, come from? from? Who, Who hired those I.O.s? Say, from, say from, from the report, that I've read, these IOs are sometimes state officials. And the state officials in group where they cannot be traced, does it mean that we are actually facing problems of digital platform with the officials who are actually supposed to be regulating the platform, but then they have, have become, become a problem, problem themselves. themselves. So, in, in terms, terms of integrity, integrity of these officials, officials to check these um, activities, activities online, online. So, so how can we deal, deal with that? With that? So, so I'm looking, looking bottom-up, up, I'm not looking top-down. I'm, I'm looking, looking at the real, real thing, thing. And, and then we should, should need to work, work together, together Say, say, if the officials are actually working or using those IOs, and they, and they said, you have to deal with this one, two, three, four, five, or check the information online of the various parties, why? To check whether the political parties are, are actually following legal guidelines or not. Would, Would it be, be a, a breach of privacy or not? A breach of the rights of the parties or not?
Yes, yes definitely, definitely there, there will, will be. be. It's, it's possible. possible. Please, Please, any questions, questions now? I am from the Royal Thai Police and I have been considering petitions or complaints. I'm former director of trails. I was also a former member of the Open Forum. So I am quite interested in, you know, before talking to about any other countries, I want to express my thoughts about social online campaign. There are um, strengths and weaknesses. You know, whenever you debate anything online, there's no, not much physical attack. You know, no fights, right? No fists, uh, cuffs. Um, But a lot of these issues then would be thrown in online. But there are certainly violence from hate speech. And you're talking about disinformation and misinformation of fake news. So that uh, is uncontrollable and that replaces the physical violence. And, you know, in Thai society, um, a lot of hate speech um, are bounds, not only during the election. I have uh, experience, we have to ask Kun Adi Aman whether in Singapore, was there ever any ban on uh, social media and electoral campaign online or not? Because I went with, I worked with Dr. Shi Xing Shuan, who was the opposition in um, Singapore. Singapore. And, and I, I went, went in as a tourist, and I, and I went to observe the election. election. They, they thought I was a Singaporean. I was, I was sitting in the office, and the police came. came. And, and then, then they, they accused him, him they're saying he was, he was using social online for campaign. campaign. And, and this, this also happened in another country, country, I think in Cambodia. That, that is actually, actually a, uh, an, an attempt, attempt to take down the opposition. opposition. I, I don't know whether Kun Adi knows, knows about this. this. You know, you know all, all over the world, the world they campaign, campaign everything uh, online, online, but Singapore is still, still banning any campaigning, campaigning online. online. I think, I think the, the Move Forward Party used a lot of this. I think others then would follow. The new generation would then certainly follow suit. We have the um, middle income people who have access, those who are literate, but we also have many who are illiterate, or very poor people who are not used to uh, accessing these platforms. They might not use line even, you know, they would just receive calls or um, and or pick up money sometimes online. Your question is very valid. Uh, how are we going to solve this question? I would like to ex just express my idea, Kun Adi. Can you please voice your opinion? Uh, I, don't I don't know the, the uh, nitty-gritty, but, but um, uh, from what I've, what I've uh, learned, learned is, is uh, Singapore, Singapore is one of the uh, more uh, stringent, stringent uh, ones um, there is. There is. Um, um, but then, then it, it, this is the whole issue, issue and, and, and Peter raised, raised it earlier, that there, there is a tension between um, uh, regulating and setting limits on, on uh, uh, online campaigning, campaigning and also, also uh, expression of of, um, um, of views um, um, online versus, versus uh, freedom, freedom of speech, speech. Um, and and, uh, uh, and and also there is uh, security, security considerations, considerations um, uh, stemming out of 
hate, hate speech, speech and, and, um, and uh, all, all the negative, negative uh, effects that, that could come out of um, expressions, expressions of views that takes place in the online sphere. sphere. Um, um, and and uh, every, every context is different. And this, and this is... is um, this, this is, is why we uh, would, uh, would like, like to promote uh, national, national debates on, on these issues. issues. Um, but then, but then the, 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 the conundrum is that if, if these, these matters are left, left to the devices of each country, country um, we, we have found that, that it may, it may be, be difficult for certain, certain countries, especially the smaller countries, countries to gain, gain attention from, from the platforms, platforms uh, to, to have, have the uh, necessary resources to uh, deal, deal with the problems themselves. themselves. Therefore, they, 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 uh, we, we have, have concluded, concluded that, that even, even though, though the solutions may be um, context-driven um, in, in national, national uh, scope, scope, but, but the, the effort, effort requires regional or even, or even in the future, future global effort um, so, so that, that there, there is um, a sufficient, sufficient critical, critical mass, mass to, to tackle, tackle the issues. Um, and, 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 and we come, come from, from quite, quite um, Lena, Lena and I, we work, work in the Asian Pacific, Pacific region and it's, it's very diverse. diverse. And, and there are giants, giants of, a, of, of countries in the, in the region, region, but there are very tiny countries, countries as well. And, and, um, and, and we see this as an opportunity, that, that countries, countries can work together, big and, big and small, for the benefit, the benefit of everyone. Now, now having, having said, said this, this because, because it's a regional, regional effort, effort, there needs to be um, common, common ground. ground. Um, so, so you can't, you can't tackle each and, each and every problem, problem but, but you can, you can find Starting, starting from, from the lowest common denominator. denominator. For, example, For example, starting from, from definitions, from, from uh, the, uh, based, based on experience, the, the types of um, problematic, problematic contents, contents uh, that is out there, there uh, in, in terms, terms of what, what uh, platforms, platforms can, can or cannot do. do. Uh, so, so things, things like this, there, are, co uh, uh, there is there enough, enough common ground. ground to work, work um, regionally, regionally and, and, and create, create regional, regional cooperation. Yeah. Well, we've, well, we've tried, tried to, to, at every, every opportunity, opportunity, we try, we try to, to uh, say, say this, um, but it, but it, it probably, probably takes, takes time, time to, to gain traction, and, and uh, we're, talking we're talking about the vast region, region as well. well. Right, thanks. <laughs> I don't know whether it's a question or a comment because I am studying uh, at the social media that has been used by various parties for campaigning. When you say that it's an I.O. operation, what, it is what, but not how. And I think Thai society cannot yet understand I.O. We have an image that those who are working at the security unit, you know, they are uh, operating against the people in their country. But, you know, in the political arena, the various parties, they also use I.O. Uh, they are doing it themselves, they are using various marketing agencies or the various companies as well. So but if you look at the regulations of the EC, uh, on, spending on spending of money for campaigning, campaigning. there are a lot of loopholes. They, they do not have to report their direct spending, spending. but if they, well, say, say if they, they hire a third company, company you, know, you know, a third person, person party company, company they, don't they don't have to report, report it, or they, they might, might not even have to mention this. this. So, so it's, it's a conversation, conversation for preparing, preparing the readiness for the, for the next, next election. election. It, it might be faster than we expect, than we even the election. election. But, but at the same, same time, IOs, which I feel it's a problem, a lot of times you think of I.O. 
as, you know, sending risky um, messages or hate speech or misinformation or disinformation. But one thing that is controversial in itself is that you have never looked at I.O. in which they push a huge amount of message, but it is positive. And, and the effect, effect is like what, what Kun Ham has mentioned, mentioned that, that it's, it's becoming, becoming a socialization. socialization. It's, it's like grooming. It's, it's like making them change their electoral, electoral vote. vote. It has it happened in this uh, campaign. campaign. But, but society, society is not ready to uh, define, define it because, because of the result to the election has not, not yet, yet been, been clearly seen or defined, or, defined or how, how it had led, led to this. It, this, this is, is just the beginning. beginning. We are quite worried that in the next election, uh, there, uh, there might be even more smooth. smooth. You know, you just, just that is, is uh, uh, it becomes, becomes organic. organic. Because, because what Kun Ton has mentioned, there, there are many obstacles in trying to make them un people understand, understand because it's automated, it's AI, AI it looks smooth, it, there's no medium. Uh, we're, talking we're talking about, about I.O. as an authentic behavior, behavior. but there are directions for those organic, organic. It's like there, there is an order for the people to do this. this. For example, for example, and, and people don't understand, don't understand and, and we might, might need to discuss, discuss this a bit more in order, order to understand the process better. It is a viewpoint, which is, which is quite interesting by everyone. We might give a few minutes to our speakers to respond to the comments or the viewpoint. I would like to share uh, maybe ex understand uh, my, my, my point of view on information discussion, uh, I.O. Information, information operation does not mean simply we are putting in this information or, you know, uh, create hate to the other party. For our I.O., as we understood it, is that there must be someone that there is a headquarter, right? And then, and then they order the, the network, network to disperse content, content whether, whether it's positive or negative. The, the network, network, you know, you know once, once they press, press a button, button the, the message, message is ready, ready to be sent out, out and, and they, they have, have a set of uh, answers. answers. How, How can, can I explain it so clearly? clearly? It's, it's because, because our party was, was accused that the Move Forward Party has many, many officers relating to social media, media which, which is the I.O., and that we have hundreds. I don't, I don't know how where we would get, get the money to do that, that but okay. okay. But, but whether you would, would believe it or not, if, if you notice, notice compare this to UGC, user-generated user content, and, and the person who is actually working on I.O. operations, information, information operation. operation. The, the thin, thin line is that whether they are volunteers or whether it is a process where they are paid. You know, Gao you Gai, know, uh, the Move Forward, forward Party, party has been, has been accused that even though it's UGC, it's, it's really I.O. But, but in fact, we, we are able to respond to people's need, need. And, and we found points where people would respond to. And then, and then they would send off those data, data by themselves. By themselves. But, but this, this is all almost, almost, almost like, like we are uh, pointing, pointing fingers, fingers at other parties. parties. But, but I have monitored other accounts or the users of people who said they are supporter of this and that party. But, but I saw more IOs than what we did. So, so there is, is actually many, many uh, accusations accusation that we hire a huge agency, agency. 
that, ca uh, you know, 10 million baht to hire IOs. We don't have even money to pay the candidates. I would like to also cancel my former research project that I completed previously. It's a science experiment that tries to see that when it's a political disinformation, what are the key drivers that make people decide to share those new or those content that is a political disinformation and what we encounter? It's quite surprising when we found out about it that the age, the age range, and their level of education are not a, ma um, a factor at all. It's not the expediter to make people share this kind of uh, political disinformation content. What they encounter, I would like to put it simple. In our team, we said because of love. We love that political party. We love that kind of idea. They love that ideology. Or they love the person who shared that from the source of the post, for example. The one who shared might be their relative or the trusted person. So it's like a gatekeeping mechanism in a way that if their parents, their grandparents, or the related share it, it's OK, or the political influence in the social media. So that's why they decide to share that further. It doesn't mean that they are not aware because they are old or any other reason at all. It's because of love. And it is very interesting because it means that when it's political issues, it's difficult to solve. How do you solve that, right? And also, while uh, referring to the research from Singapore, that it encountered that actually, the people, even though they are aware that this is fake news, that is a fake news on the news feed, there's very limited number who decided to correct the fake news that they see on their feed. Because what they say is that there would be the conditions that for the people to decide to correct that this is fake. They first have to see that when they decide to correct it, what is it that they have to trade off? They might have to trade off the relationship with the family. If they say to the auntie that, auntie, we have fake news. Maybe the auntie might don't want to be the auntie anymore. And you cannot go home during some grand anymore. This is a real experience. But this is a, in the case of the US, and there was the, the correcting about the ideologies, and it's like a, you are uninvited from Thanksgiving. It didn't really happen. It is about post sharing. And so, if they believe that they correct information, there would be people who believe and listen to them that, yes, this is wrong. And it would be the happy changing. And that when they would decide to change, or correct the news. So, because the human nature is just to let it go. And Secondly, in about word buying that you ask, I would like to say from the perspective of political scientists, pure political scientists, word buying is a chronic problem of the third world countries, or developing countries that with very baby each democratic system. And it's with a problem on the economy because people prioritize the livelihood first, ideology come after. And how? Because there's no other way to change it. Aside from restructuring everything, we have to have democratic government that put this as a priority and also the capacity to solve the economic uh, problem. So that down the road, people do not need to be concerned about the, the survival anymore. So they start to approach about the idea or the ideology. They choose the political party because of policy base, not because of populism. So the step has to start from the broad structures, and then hopefully it will solve the problem in the political cultures. And the vote of what mine would be difficult. That is the expectation. And the last part about RO, I also would like to say, echo what Kun um, said, that it, of course, the memory is that the army would be the one doing the IO, but actually the IO is not just in that way only. The democratic side or other parties also can do the IO as well. And it could be a negative IO or positive IO, just as Kun Kartun said. Therefore, I believe another question 
Or another way that we would look at it is, yes, there might be another way for us to uh, for them to counter itself a mechanism to prevent IO from happening. It might have to be the way of self correcting system that it would solve its own problem. It, there's no single bullet or the one, one universal solution. But should we solve the I.O. when it could be a positive or negative also is another point. And last one I would like to add up from Hun Ari. Is that Singapore? As Hun Ari say, um, it, it has a legal framework to prevent the um, disinformation that's quite stringent. But in another perspective, is that the anti-fake news law of Singapore, it has a layer of the cost for the responsibility or liability to the platform. As I said at the beginning, the platforms always just above the responsibility that are going to take, be responsible for the content on the platform. But in Singapore and other countries, I believe that Germany also, it, I enforce the platform to have the liabilities regarding the content that in that platform, if it leads to hate speech, violence, and others, uh, the platform has to take the responsibility. It has to be removed in this limited time. Otherwise, they have to pay the fine, uh, the sanctions. So this might be another measure to prevent or elevate the I.O. or negative content in the social media platform. I should answer before because the professor said it all. And I totally agree with Kundun and what the professor said that about the I.O., this kind of brain watching is not just about sharing the same content repeatedly for a thousand times. I would like to give you an example of that. Uh, we've been through the whole world before. And for the psychological warfare, they still recruiting the you know those kind of people to sing and then get the army to uh, sing on the, the stage and dance. And if you want to see that, it's my army. You can see on Facebook of the Thai army. So, in summary, I believe that there's two main points. Main thing of this discussion. One, the ECT after the, um, that um, the establishment, we wanted to be uh, the one to uh, oversight authority to leveling the people. Are they still functioning? And and if we have this um, innovations like ECT, the tools are ECT. If, if it's too functional, how do we get them to adapt to come to the current trend? So well, that's what we talk about the, the you know like the army is are one as acting as an IO. So ECT also have to take a hard road. That if the ECT still want to remain relevant, I still think it's okay to have other innovations. I think it is very important for the ECT. So if do we get uh, it's easy to, to worry find something or validate something, for example. 300 policy by Move Forward Party is true, so all the political party has to submit the policy to ECT, and, and then also if the public would like to change it into like a poster or anything, it's it's a free, it's a by free will. But ECT, so if anyone wants to know anything that is a fact, they have to come to ECT. That they will get the official information from political party. I'm not sure that would be a solution, but I think the main point is how to ensure that the, this agency that should be impartial have credibility and that we have trust and confidence enough to feel that everyone is playing on the level playing ground. And secondly, so how do we ensure that the water, eligible waters, are not under any influence about money, in, uh, about what buying, about I.O.? I think it's a dilemma still that the, the free will, let me say, the integrity of free will, uh, what is it that we can accept? What is it that we feel that this is not a free will, by free will? As a political scientist, uh, as we say, it might be choosing the policy. That you should think about the value, the value of the policy that you feel that you are, it's the most welcoming in the democratic system. But there's still another gap. 
like, like I could choose him because I love that political party. I love that. You know, I'm a fan. Is it okay? That is that a free will? So. This, this is not easy. easy. So, so are we limiting the change of mind at what level? Because I don't have a way of campaigning like the high park or the WAN truth or anything. We want to change the mind of people through the policy to demonstrate that these are candidates are really going on the ground. We are not, a, you know, a, a seize the power or anything. We really that to listen to you. We understand. We get you. So this is also about the method. But we see that the operation that lead to violence. I, I think the, the line should be put here. What type of operation that would lead to non-democratic system? Uh, for example, the, the release of the fake news, like the U.S. are setting up the, the army base in Thailand. It, it would lead to the misunderstanding that, you know, they, they need to seize the power from the Move Forward Party because Move Forward Party allow foreign in, inference, interference. So this line, it should to mean what is a democratic, what is non-democratic. I think that would not be the violating of rights. The, the other thing would be the free will. Like you can argue, you can, you know, I have this argument, it's okay, but violence should not happen. Violence, of course, is not democratic. And we believe that democracy is that we can express our opinion, and our truth is not the ultimate truth. But during the election, we're trying to find a common truth in the society, right? And this is it that I would like to say. Right, from listening to you, actually the Move Forward Party is not the best in canvassing votes online. We have points where we cannot change as well. That point is, uh, is uh, trying to canvass vote through line. If you, if you, I, I would, would like, like to provide a little analysis. During, during the past, past election, the misinformation, false news, we faced that a lot, but, but we found, found that in line. line. Line is, you know, quite sometimes there are a lot of this information. Of course, of course you cannot, cannot go into, into that line group and explain. And explain. Let me uh, tell you that, you know, behind the scene, we have, we have to meet every day. day. It, it says Pita did not actually graduate from this school. school. Gaokai will, will allow the US, the US to set up, up the base, base here, there. there. Everything, Everything is on line, line application. application. Of, of course, it, it is um, similar to crisis, crisis management, management, right? So, so how can the party respond in this case? case? Certainly, we, we have to use our skills uh, uh, in res to respond online. online. How can you, can you manage, manage to get the, the responses into those line group. group. We still have to use social media to find these fake news. So we're lucky in terms that high people are totally addicted to social media. But there is also another point where you have to consider if they believe that the Mupo Party will allow the U.S. to set up the base, we cannot change their mind. They decide to choose. What happened was we decided so they are not our customer. We cannot reach them. So in responding to them, it's just to set a line, is to draw a line. And we clarify ourselves that what you said was wrong. And then, and then afterwards, afterwards, it's a measure of, you know, integrity, integrity using the consideration of the people, people now. Apart, Apart from this, I would have to say, say you know, in, in fact, fact, ECT has a monitoring unit for uh, monitoring social media um, during, during the election. election. 
Is this just a, just a you know, a sort of funny, funny story? story. But, but, you know, the party um, have been, uh, you, know, you know, from we WeWatch. Watch. You know, you can see around a million uh, messages. ECT has 20 officers monitoring the uh, electoral messages and campaign online. So what can you see, you know, with these 20 people? In a tiny room, smaller than this room, that we have 20 computers. So finally, what happened was the political party has to monitor ourselves. And, and if the political, political party found fake news, false, false information, disinformation, what, what we did, we, we have to write up a report and submit, submit it to the ECT. ECT. They, this, this person, uh, the message in this website is a misinformation, a slander, a slander and, and then the ECT would look into it. The actual implementation is even worse because it, it takes, takes an, a month, month for them, for them to, to consider, consider it. it. The, the message in, in the social media, media it's gone. gone. You don't even have to consider anything, you know, when, when the, the uh, uh, Future Forward Party, Ajahn Jolotjerm, you know, he writes certain messages, especially when he has a high status in society, a louder voice. The, the false, false information, information actually went, went very far. far. You know, before you, you can correct this, this misinformation, misinformation took a month or a month and a half. Uh, I, I would like to add a little bit. You know, you know the, the number of the social media usage, usage you know, post-election? Post -election, I, I had to report on that. On that. I think in the morning, someone was doing an annual report on the usage of social media. Uh, the people who use it most are the officials, for six hours per day. So you see, it's a civil office. I, we would not believe it. We would believe that it's, you know, maybe the elderly or whatever. But in terms of, you know, the TikTok, you know, the civil officers, officers use, use it the most. most. And, and it's very strange that the TikTok um, makes, makes the Move Forward Party win. All right. Are there, Are there any questions, questions here? here? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, one, one question here, here a comment, comment here. I. I uh, we talk about social media, but we need to learn about uh, organizing a debate. Uh, there's a, the election that have the highest number of debate in the Thai history. I'm not sure whether it's the most in Asia, but I believe that the debate, when we have a large number of debate, both from the CSO or from the media itself, it helped reducing the cost, and also it helped with the campaign, per se, and also those for example, the elderly who's not on social media, but they watch TV. There's always debate, almost daily, during the election time for them to watch. So the debate. I observe that each of the political party, of course, the Move Forward Party is the highest one. They would take a short clip of their own, uh, on their own speech and then shorten it for TikTok and then repeat it. And each day there's always new content. I believe this is very interesting movement. And I would like to thank the media and the CSO for allowing the people to have the opportunity not to have to go out under the rain, under the hot sunlight to watch the debate organized by the ECT because no, actually in the past no one come to the, came to the ECT debate because it's not very friendly and environmentally friendly for them. And so there's a new culture that you can just be at home, listen to everything. And I observed later on that when there's an objection or the, you know, the disagreement is always online. So the big uh, protests become less and less. I'm not sure my observation is correct, but I just want to thank the media. Yes, yes, for their role. Thank you very much.
Actually, I'm from BD Panyong Yong Foundation. My name is Chok Chai Satawet. It is such a pleasure for me to be here to listen to the information. But as a person who worked in the institute, I believe that uh, the people vote and vote for the parties. It actually there's three main relating point. One policy. Uh, all the project that the political party would like to do. And secondly, the ideologies um, of the political party, that whether it's liberal, conservationism, or the third one is the sentiment. I quite uh, believe that it's a mix between Wording between the uh, ideology and sentiment, because we never know about the policy or the project, how it would turn out to be like, whether it is really feasible in four years. For example, ECT say that the policy is not like selling the dream or fooling, hoodwinking the people or so popularism that it's tricked the people to vote for them and it's not doable. Afterward. Afterward. So, so who actually, actually evaluate those in policy, policy whether, whether it's doable, doable or not, feasible or not? Because, because the ECT themselves do not have, have they, they do have the rules and regulation, but the ECT do not have any mechanism to prove, to showcase to the people that which policy has a tendency to go to the positive or negative or doable or feasible. Or even if ECT would like to do that, it's not an easy process. It's not easy to judge whether the policy or the project it would turn out to be like A or B or C. So it's in the um, is in the uh, stage that the people have no place to turn to. They don't have any reliance to make an informed, rational decision. It's a between the. That's why it's a mix between ideologies and sentiment. So if you really cling to the ideology, it's to make you as such have a strong sentiment afterwards. So if we have any institute that could be a place that people could turn to, could rely on to provide the impartial information and analysis. Um, um, I, think I think of the, of the uh, KPI, KPI, King Prapoklao, Prachatipok, and also the Bridi Panom Yong Institute. I would like to refer for the, the Thai history when there's a, the change of the political regime in the 1932. The, the uh, counterpart is Kanara Sanon and Prapoklao. At the end, the Kanara Sanon lose and disappear from the system. It did not survive that. So at the end, they turned into dictatorship, dictatorship themselves, themselves, like the General Pa, Brom Pon Pa. That's why the army stepped into the power to seize the democratic regime and controlling it. But we might say that conservationism could develop the KPI and the pretty Phnom Yong Institute is a private one, but we are not recognized as a we were not recognized as a national institute but by the ideologies we can have the exchange we all can have the exchange no matter it's from the liberalism or conservatism and ECT is it supposed to be impartial one or IDEA as well we need to think further ahead of how do we do and uh, so including the race on university of the professor, how could you become a pillar when the people have nowhere to turn to from this, this day onward? Thank you very much. It's such an excellent perspective. And please, um, the next person. Yes, I would like to add just a small point. It's about uh, the CSO whose work on the campaign. And, and like, like we watch and I law for the, uh, the uh, as an observer of the elections, actually, actually the activity of the CSO are quite very, it's very diverse. Also, we there we have water educations who uh, provide knowledge to them, election observations to observe the elections, and the civic education to and these activities. Are uh, the activity that actually we should be allocated funding because it involves the expenditures. It should be the government funding provided to this activity. And if you think of Thailand context, I pose a few questions. First, before the coup, 
That's a regulation where we clear one that ECT have to have the budget to provide support to the CSO in the uh, election activity and election observations. But after the coup, they removed these rules. They removed these rules and the regulations. And in the recent election, there's not allowing to have the, um, the any observer. And this time also happening. But because the CSO are very alert and we watch as a discussion, so they they give in because they, so that they can coordinate it, it together. With the CSO, CSO like a the strong pillar for for the society. Anyway, but before the coup, when we still had these rules and regulations, the ECT need to have the money, quite a good amount, at the ten million baht or so. But ECT is the one who manages this budgeting. They're the one holding the money in their hand, and they would assign the CSO. That would be the observer for the elections. My idea is that this is just a wrong way. I talk about this for so many times. If we reform the election. We need to work on this. It has to be transparent. And we have to have a separate impartial committee, not ECT holding the money and say that, oh, I would give you the money to these organizations to, to you know, like monitor ECT themselves. It's a conflict of interest. So the ECT, if we would like to propose the reform, we have to push for this agenda so that it would be truly free and impartial. I believe we are coming at the end. Before we conclude, I would like just to get one minute. For the perspective about I.O., uh, but that the government, who's the one acting as an I.O., uh, or the official acting as an I.O., comparing, for example, like the water who act as an I.O., Actually, there's a difference between these two viewpoints. If the government officials, especially the one who's in the security you know, issues, who act as I.O., it creates such a difference, like the person from the representative from we were saying, like ECT. They and issue the announcement and make their own decisions for the allocation of the funding. This is a conflict of interest. So if the government officials, especially in the security field, act as an I.O., this is the problem. Where's the problem lies? It's different than the people doing it themselves. I really want to press this point. The government officials should not be involved in any way about, about this kind of I.O., they need to be really impartial. And, and this is the perspective I would like to live with about the roles of the government officials. They need to really be. The last minute, please, because I see the organizer already saying something. Just the last point. Last minute, one minute only. I echo what Kun Pong Sat say. We t need to take a look at the Indonesian model, not about I.O., about the conflict of interest that you raised. There's one, we should have one body who monitor, oversee the EECT. They call that the canvas rule. They received the budget from directly from the state, not through the ECT. The budget would be sent directly to this big body that would handle the work on the overseeing. So it would be the check and balance between these two organizations. So please, if you have time, study on this. Yeah, thank you. Please, uh, I'd encourage you to study um, my, my, my country's experience. Um, because uh, uh, um, there's, there's good and bad, and bad in there, in there. So, so have a have look. A look. Um, uh, my, my quick question is, is to Kuna uh, Wood. Um, I, I noticed that, that you, you paid, paid zero, zero baht, baht to, to Facebook uh, because, because you, you haven't placed any ads. ads. But, then but then you, you do admit, admit that, that um, uh, your supporters have uh, uh, placed, placed content on, on Facebook, Facebook uh, uh, because, because it's user-generated uh, content, right? right? Do, you Do you consider, consider that, that as, as, um, as an in-kind in -kind contribution, then, to your political parties? Um, and, and if so, so do, you, do you report it?
This is actually a um, legal gap, loophole. Um, it is a huge loophole, actually. Part of it is good for the party because then the framework for the money support is very small. I have looked at this. You know, if we actually have the money that the people contribute to us might be even more than 100 million. But in the election law, it says that if there are people who are not the party themselves or the candidate themselves, if they distribute information in the media and the amount is less than 10,000 baht, it is considered as follow one, the party do not have to report this to the ECT. And two, it's considered as uh, the application of the uh, lib liberty or rights. There has been one case that has been since the um, the um, fast forward party. There was one inspector who created a clip before the election. The production is really good. The cost was about 300,000 or 400,000. If so, then we have to report it to the ECT. The Move Forward Party, the team, is the same team as the Fast Forward Party, that's me. We, we consider, consider the, the and study the law when we were, we were setting, setting up the fast forward party and, and we were affected. affected. So, so we had to uh, set up a um, strategy. strategy. So, so it came out as a user generated content. content. The, the ECT may, may amend the law in order, in order to, to be more inclusive, inclusive. but from, from my own view, view I think that if you write it like that, that it's, it's good, good for, for the political, political parties, parties because, because then you can cut down the costs for campaigning. campaigning. But if but in the future, ECT, ECT may consider it that, that any, any cost that, that is incurred for canvassing votes, votes even, even though it's voluntary from the public, public must be all calculated, calculated. then, then I, it can be understood. Be but, but it must, must be under, under two, two criteria. criteria. First, you, you must uh, expand the amount of uh, funding, funding that is allowed for electoral campaign. campaign. Not, Not 44 million, million anymore. It should, it should be 100 million. million. And, and second, the ECT. ECT. How would it ECT determine the measures so that it does not become a burden, uh, an undue burden to the political parties? Because, because, say for example, example if they can bus votes for free for us, for us uh, if it's user-generated content by the public, and then, and then the, the public political, political party has to report, how can, can you do it so that it does not become a burden? Because, because any report, you have, have to include your ID, ID, ID card, card, you have to sign everything, everything you have to calculate the amount of money, money you know, seven or eight pages per spending. So, so uh, I, uh, we, we actually, actually discussed this, this and we said, for example, uh, uh, hypothetical, hypothetical example. example. If there, there is, is like one million people who can vote for us, for us and, and I have to do like one million, million report, how, how can, can we live then? then? We, we won't, won't be able to work. work. That's, That's it. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So, so I think this, this panel has actually um, given you a lot of thoughts and a variety of views. Um, the Kun Wood from, from, from the Move Forward Party, from a political party. party. Secondly, Ajahn Zurachani from the, the, I, the academician view. view from Hidon University, University, and Kun Vasin from WeWatch, right? right? So, so thank, thank you so much for our, our panel. panel.
for such, for such an interesting, interesting panel. panel. I think we were meant to be here, here for one and a half hours. We are here for two and a half. So obviously, it was a very, very, very uh, interesting and exciting and invigorating discussion. So thanks a lot for that. And before we leave, uh, I would like our regional director for Asia, the Pacific, Lina Rikila Tamang, to give us closing remarks. And, and post, post that, that, we have some closing, closing coffee, coffee and, and some snacks, snacks before we all uh, go and enjoy our weekend. Thank you, Bosco. We, we are clearly, clearly quite, quite over, over time. time. So, so thank, thank you, everyone, everyone sticking, sticking around. around. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Um, and as, as I anticipated, I anticipated uh, Thailand, Thailand story on online, online campaigning, campaigning really, really brought about, about some interesting, interesting new, new insights, insights and uh, lessons for broader debate. debate. Um, um, we, we learned, learned that, that uh, indeed, indeed money, money alone, alone doesn't, doesn't guarantee, guarantee a successful, successful online, online campaign, campaign nor, nor does it doesn't guarantee, guarantee your electoral, electoral um, uh, win. win. Um, and if and the if Philippines, Philippines is often, often uh, considered uh, sort of a basin, basin zero, zero when, when, when it comes, comes to disseminating this information uh, to digital, digital means, means, we also, also learned, learned that in Thailand, and, and perhaps due to, to some, some rather strict, strict electoral, electoral laws, also, also criticized at times, times where playing, playing a role in, in curbing, curbing some, some of the misinformation, disinformation, disinformation the elections, albeit such such um, such, such messages, messages then came, came about, about after, 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 after the elections. elections. Um, but uh, at the same, same time, we learned how, how there are some new risks, risks clearly, clearly in, in Horizon, Horizon and, and several uh, interesting, interesting new topics, topics for further, further research, research uh, was, uh, was, uh, was mentioned. mentioned. Um, in the in morning, the morning we, we spoke about the political, political, or political finance, finance report, report um, and I and think, I think what, what I, gathered I gathered from the, the inputs, inputs and, and feedback, feedback was that, that we had, had managed, managed to cover the critical, uh, critical, uh, critical issues, issues and, and cover the ground. The um, and the and recommendations, the recommendations were, were mostly endorsed, endorsed although, although, importantly, uh, there, was there was also differing views, views on, on, on some, some of the recommendations. And I and felt I there that we probably, probably would have needed, needed a, bit a bit more time to really, to really go, go through the, the recommendations so that, so that we, we would have heard, heard the different groups, different, groups, different, different political, political parties, parties views on, on, those on those recommendations and what to do about, about them. them. But there are obviously other opportunities to continue the debate. We have now, now the data, the data we, have we have the analysis, we have, we have the, the recommendations, and obviously one, one next step, step is to uh, share that also, that also with the Election Commission, Commission of Thailand, Thailand with, with political, political decision makers, and also, and also continue, continue uh, our, our discussions. discussions. So, so if, if I may request your help, help in, in, in uh, disseminating the findings of the, of the, of the report so, so that there, there is more awareness, awareness of, of the existence and, and so, so that, that uh, different uh, also advocacy, uh, advocacy groups, groups, civil society, academia, academia political parties can, can uh, take advantage and make, and make use of those, those recommendations in the, in the, in the work, work that will unfold in the in the coming, in the coming months. months. Perhaps we need, we need a, a, we need we need a TikTok, TikTok video on, on the recommendations on, on what to do with political finance regulations, regulations in, in, in Thailand. Thailand. Simply, Simply lastly, to, to thank, thank you all so very much for being, being with us today. today. Thank, thank you all the speakers and uh, presenters, moderators. Thank, thank, you thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you everyone who contributed from the floor and, and by attending or asking, or asking questions, questions and, 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 and all, all that. that. I hope I you hope had also interesting um, conversations, conversations during, during the coffee breaks, breaks and, and uh, lunch, lunch hour. hour. Thank, thank you so much, Tanapon, Pushpu, Adi, for putting this all together. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you also, also for, for all the, the um, uh, technical, technical team, team for, for, the, the, for streaming, uh, uh, helping us to stream this, uh, this uh, to to the wider world. world. And, and last, last but not, not least, least, a very big, big shout out to our wonderful interpreters who uh, allowed, allowed us to understand, understand each other better. better. A true, uh, true, uh, act true act of, of uh, democracy, democracy in, in action. action. So, so. Thank, Thank you so much. So much. And, and let's, let's have, have a coffee. coffee. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. everyone.